I'm Ben Orford and we're going to show you how to make and fit an axe handle. Now learning how to make and fit an axe handle is a really good skill. If you're out in the woods and you break your axe handle then you're going to have to replace it. So Wetlings have brought out this fantastic kit. They brought out a fully finished axe head with an axe cover as well. Um, they've also provided a hickory blank for your handle and they've also provided you with all, all the wooden wedges and the steel wedges for fitting. So effectively using this kit you can make an axe like this. So first of all either using your broken axe handle or an axe that you like you can lay that on and draw your pattern. If you haven't got that or you want to change the shape or you've got an existing pattern that you want to use you can then lay that onto the hickory blank ideally choosing the grain to suit so look for the nice straight grain and then laying that on the flat face you can then get a pencil and start to mark out that first shape. So marking around the pattern, at this stage if you want to change the length or the shape of the handle, if you want to make a more pronounced butt end to the handle, then now is the time to do it. But I quite like this shape so I'm just drawing around this pattern all the way around. Now the important part is going to be the head end. So at this stage we need to make sure that we leave ample amount of waste wood so that we can get a very tight fit on the eye of the axe head itself. So make sure that you've got at least as wide as the actual eye of the axe there, like even if you left four or five mil of waste wood is a good idea, and you want about at least about half an inch of waste wood protruding from the eye of the axe when it's finished. So just put a little pencil mark on there. Now, if you're in the workshop environment, there's nothing to stop you using a bandsaw to saw around that profile. But obviously, if you're out in the woods and you've got to restore your axe, then you're not going to have a bandsaw. So we're going to show you how to do it with an axe. So once you've marked the pattern on, we'll go over to the chopping block and we'll actually start to chop off that waste material. So once we've got our profile drawn on, at this stage, we've really got to make a conscious effort of thinking about the grain direction. Now, Wherever we've drawn these curved shapes on, it's really important that we're working in the right direction with the axe. The rule of thumb is if you always try and work from the high point to the low point, you should be working with the grain. The other option that you've got to make it slightly easier, slightly quicker for stock removal, is to use a pull saw and actually cut square to our shape, but down to our profile that we've drawn on there. This will help remove those bigger chunks of wood and also prevent the axe from going too far and actually splitting off the rest of the side of the shape off. So that's an option that you've got. When we're using the axe, it's really important that we work with that grain direction. So as I'm working, you'll see that I put lots of stop cuts in to help weaken the fibers and I'm constantly turning the axe blank round to make sure that there's no fear of me splitting off parts of my handle. So first of all, we'll work down this face with an axe, Put plenty of nicks in, that will loosen the fibres and then slice down. Don't try and go too deep from one direction. So after a few blows, turn it round and come back the other way. Now, this can't be rushed and you've got to just take your time and work as close to those pencil lines that you feel comfortable with. Now, obviously, we can't show you the whole process going to be a good few minutes of work so what I've done after you've done those few sides you should end up with something that looks like that we've worked right down to our pencil lines and we're left with something that's got the profile but it's still quite thick and square so the next thing we need to draw a center line down it and draw on our top top shape so we can now draw on our center line down our handle so using a straight edge or a ruler line that up with the center of our blank and then draw that line down there. Now this is going to help us make a nice symmetrical shape to our axe handle. Now rather than it being dead square in section, most axe handles have got a nice oval section to them and that's what we're going to create. So using either your broken axe handle or an axe that you've got available, we can draw that profile shape on so and at this stage it's really important that we leave ample material at the head end as well so what we're going to do once we've drawn that shape on we're going to show you a simple little technique that's going to help make sure that we leave enough waste wood for the fitting 
So once you've drawn that shape on, the easiest way to do it is to actually hold it end on with the head end in a vise, and then actually using the axe head, make sure that you don't cut yourself. If you want to put some masking tape on there, it's not a bad idea. Lay that on, lining it up with our center line, and then with a nice sharp pencil, we can draw around the inside of that eye. And that's going to give us the shape that we'll need for final fitting. Now, at this stage, I like to actually leave a good five millimeters all the way around that shape that we've drawn on. So just roughly with a pencil, just draw that extra material all the way around. And then when we start to remove the waste off our sides, we're still going to have plenty of material for actually fitting the axe head. So we'll take that over and we'll start to remove some of that waste material. So just as before, we've still got to refer to our pencil lines and make sure we work in the correct direction for the grain of the handle. So always work from big to small again. Now you'll find that you'll really need to put some serious nicks into the side with the axe to prevent the axe from sticking in and also from it preventing splitting any of the material off the sides. So do a few passes one way, turn it over and do the same the other way. Because this is a sawn blank, you might find that the grain will catch slightly more than normal. So just really take your time and work as close to those lines as possible. Do that on both sides and you should end up with something that looks like this. So we've got our profile shape, we've also got this side shape that we want as well. Still looks fairly square, fairly uncomfortable to use. So now we're going to show you the tools that we need to refine that shape and get it comfortable. So now we've got to refine those surfaces. So there's different options that we've got. We can either refine the surface just with a knife. If you're out in the woods, you're not going to have the advantage of having a shave horse and a draw knife. So one of the best tools to use is what they call the Mokotorgan or the Indian crook knife. This is effectively a one-handed draw knife. The beauty of this tool is it doesn't require any vice or workbench. You purely hold the workpiece that you want to work on with one hand and then using this tool in your other hand you can make long cuts towards your body. It's really important that you keep your arm tight to your body so that you don't cut yourself. Now, hickory is an incredibly tough material so you're going to have to just take your time and try and take small little bites at it. Now it's really important that we get all those heavy axe marks out of our axe handle. If we leave any of those little nicks from the axe, that's going to make it a very weak point and the handle's likely to break. So using the crook knife you can just keep turning the workpiece round and trying to refine those little axe marks. Now this is quite a hard process and you can't take you, you can't uh, you can't rush it, you've got to take your time. Now if we're in the workshop environment the best piece of equipment to use is the shave horse and the draw knife. So we'll show you how to use that now. So the advantage of this is that you've got these jaws that you can hold the workpiece in and then we can use the draw knife for getting longer, much smoother cuts. So for the flat surfaces, what we want to try and use is the flat side of the draw knife down. So pinching this in the jaws, we can try and make nice long smooth cuts towards ourselves. Again, not trying to take too much material off, we're just trying to smooth out all those little axe marks. And again, because it's a sawn blank, you'll find that the grain will change direction very quickly. So refine that. Now, this is fine on the flat surfaces. When it comes to these curved shapes, both at the butt end and up here by the head, you won't be able to do that with the flat side of the draw knife. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it round and we're going to use the curved side of the draw knife, the bevel side. Now using this side down, it means that we can rock the draw knife through and create the, the nice curves that we're trying to create on the handle. Little nibbles, just trying to take those axe marks out and then turn it round and work back the other way. Now, at this stage, we're not taking anything off the corners. We're still leaving it really nice and square. So once you've got all those sides refined, you should end up with something like that. So nice and smooth, no heavy axe marks, but still very square in section. So the next stage is for us to actually take those corners off. So to take those corners off, 
we can grip that into the shave horse. And I personally like to use the flat side of the draw knife just to work down and gently take off those sharp corners of the handle. Try and make sure that you work in nice long cuts if you can. That's going to make it much smoother. But as soon as you start to see that it cuts up grain, just turn it around and work back the other way. We're trying to aim for each one of those sides being roughly the same width, and that's going to keep the whole blank and the whole handle straight. So we refined the shape now. We've took all the axe marks off and we've took the corners off, and we're left with these definite facets. Now, if this was going to be a handle on, say, a carving axe, I actually like that faceted handle. I find that it gives you very good grip without actually having to grip too hard. Now on a working axe, like a felling axe, where your hand has to actually slide down the shaft, we need to refine that shape and take off those sharp corners. Now, if there's lots to come off, then you can still use the draw knife. But even at this stage, using a normal sheath knife or a spoke shave to refine that shape is actually the best way to go about it. So gripping it back into the shave horse, we can use the spoke shaves set very finely just to blend all those edges and make it feel really nice when we're actually holding the handle. So take your time and just slowly blend all those edges. So we've refined the shape and we've took all those corners off and it's starting to feel really nice in the hand. We've also worked down to that oversized drawing of the eye of the axe that we've put on the handle. Now at that stage it's important that we completely dry this handle out. Now, what I tend to do is weigh this, find out what it weighs, and then actually put it somewhere warm, like an airing cupboard or next to a sort of stove, and start to dry it out. Weigh it in a couple of days' time and see if it's lost any weight. Effectively, when it stops losing weight, we know that this piece of wood is completely dried out. If we fit the axe to this handle now, and then it shrinks when it dries, the head will just come loose and we've wasted all that time. So, we've dried this handle now, and we're gonna show you how to fit the axe head. So we'll hold the axe handle back in the vise again and redraw the eye of the axe again. Now at this stage it's really important that we get this nice and in line with the axe handle. If we start to mark it crooked then you end up with a crooked axe on the end of your handle. So we've also put a bit of masking tape on the blade as well because you're going to be putting it on and taking it off to make sure that we get it a good fit. So we want to make sure that we don't cut ourselves. So I've masked up that cutting edge and I'm going to lay it back on there and look down the whole length of the handle, making sure that it's nice and straight. And we'll remark the eye. Now, this is only a sort of guesstimated line, so this is just going to give us something to work to, but it's a real important part of whittling this down and keep trying the axe head. We want to make this as tight as possible, and we want to keep whittling away until we can fit the axe so that there's about half an inch of that axe handle sticking out the eye. There's different ways of doing it. You can either just very gently, very carefully work away with a knife. You can use a crook knife. I'm going to use the shave horse and the draw knife again. So I'll take that back over. It's worth taking the head with you as well so you can try it while you're on the horse. So working very carefully with the shave horse and the draw knife, I'm going to work to that pencil line. So I tend to use the flat side down and start to sweep in no further up the handle than where the actual head's going to go. We want to try and create a nice shoulder there. So progressively work from back that point right down to our pencil lines. Don't be too quick with this. This is the real fiddly process. So gently work down somewhere near to your pencil line and then try the axe on. So I'm, I'm roughly down to my pencil line. So while I'm still sat on the shave horse, I can just try my axe and see if there's any more wood to remove. So it's it's pretty spot on. So I just need to take a little bit more, a little bit more wood off. So take your time, and we'll show you when it's almost fitted. So we've gradually worked down to our line and kept trying the axe on. And as you're working, you'll find that the axe might go on so far but you want it obviously to travel further and you'll see that you get these dirty marks on the actual handle. If you find that you're getting those dirty marks and you're not all the way up to where you want to be onto that shoulder, it's not a bad idea just to whittle away some of those dirty marks and you'll find that you'll progressively work back towards that shoulder area. 
So once you're happy that it's getting somewhere near, slide it on and then give it a give it a knock on the chopping block or on a stone. And keep driving it down so that it sits up against that nice shoulder that we've created and you want about half an inch of wood protruding. This is going to be sawn off later on, so don't worry about that. Once you're happy that that's in the right place, we can then take it over to the bench and I will show you how to mark for the wedge slot. So again, hold it in the vise. And then what we want to do is we want to mark the position for our wedge and also how far our axe is up the handle. So what we're going to do is, with our pencil, mark a line all the way across in line with the cutting edge, all the way across our eye. And then I always put a little pencil line just under the cheek of the axe there, and then I know exactly how far that axe head's travelled up. So we then take that vice. It's not a bad idea to either knock the end of the axe there so, just to get the axe to start to come off. And then we can actually put the handle back in the vice, and we want to saw down the tenon of our handle all the way down to about two thirds of the way down the length. So we're going to saw nice and straight all the way down. Now when you're sawing this, I tend to use the finest saw that I've got. This is a nice fine Japanese pull saw and I'll saw all the way down, stopping at our mark and that will create our wedge slot. So we've sawn the slot in the tenon of our axe handle and we've sawn all the way down to that line marking the two thirds of the length of our tenon. We've also made sure that when we've been sawing it that we've kept it nice and in line with the handle itself. So once you've got that done, before we fit the head, now's the time to refine the shape. If you've got any rough areas, if it's got dirty, or if you want to just run a piece of sandpaper over, now's the time to do it. If you're happy to go ahead, the next stage is to get your axe head, place it back onto the handle, knock it back on, on the stump, making sure that it goes all the way up to our line. You may find that it will go on slightly further because that slot will allow that to shrink in a little bit and it might travel a little bit further. Once you've got it like that, if you have found that that saw slot has completely closed up, you can just gently open it up with an old chisel or a knife. So the easiest way to hold it is to pop it back in the vise and then just before we drive our wooden wedge in, I like to put a bit of white glue, a bit of PVA glue, just onto the top of the slot. So we'll wipe a little bit of that on there. And this acts as two things. One, it will glue the wooden wedge in, but as we're driving it in, it will actually help the wedge go all the way in nice and easily. So we'll start that off. Just wipe a little bit on there as well. And then just start it initially in the vise just so that it holds nice and straight and then we'll take it over to the stump and we'll drive it all the way in. So we've got the axe on a nice solid stump now and we're going to use a nice heavy metal hammer and drive that wedge in. It's important that we steer the wedge as it goes so that it stays nice and straight and keep going until you hear that real nice dead tone. completely wedge the head, it's spread the end of our tenon of our axe handle and that's just ready to sit and let that dry. So we've let it sit for an hour or so and once the glue's cured we've trimmed off the waste wood. We've left about a quarter of an inch sticking out. The next thing that we've got to do is hold it back in the vise and the little steel wedge that they provide you with is going to get driven across that wooden wedge and into the handle. This prevents the actual wooden wedge travelling out of the axe handle with use. So we'll drive that in. And then all there is to do then is clean up any dirty marks. If you want to give it another sand, you can do. And then to help feed that piece of timber, it's a good idea to give it a good coating of some linseed oil. That works really well. You can even put some on the head itself as well. That will keep it from rusting. The last thing is to remove the tape, give it a good sharpen, and then we can fit the cover and take it back out into the woods and give it a test run. So it should look something like that once you've given it a good oil. You can see how the linseed oil itself brings out the grain of the handle. So I hope you found that useful, and if you like this video, then subscribe to our channel.